Om listen I A S T Om Devanagari Om is a sacred sound and a spiritual symbol in Hinduism that signifies the essence of the ultimate reality consciousness or atman It is a syllable that is chanted either independently or before a mantra in Hinduism Buddhism and Jainism Om is part of the iconography found in ancient and medieval era manuscripts temples monasteries and spiritual retreats in Hinduism Buddhism and Jainism the symbol has a spiritual meaning in all Indian dharmas, but the meaning and connotations of Om vary between the diverse schools within and across the various traditions. In Hinduism, Om is one of the most important spiritual symbols. It refers to Atman, soul, self within, and Brahman, ultimate reality, entirety of the universe, truth, divine, supreme spirit, cosmic principles, knowledge. The syllable is often found at the beginning and the end of chapters in the Vedas, the Upanishads, and other Hindu texts. It is a sacred spiritual incantation made before and during the recitation of spiritual texts, during puja and private prayers, in ceremonies of rites of passages sanskara, such as weddings, and sometimes during meditative and spiritual activities such as yoga. The syllable Om is also referred to as Ankara, Ankara Ankara, Omkara, Ankara Omkara, and Pranava, Pranava Pranava. Origin and meaning The syllable Om is referred to as pranava. Other used terms are aksara, literally, letter of the alphabet, imperishable, immutable, or ekaksara, one letter of the alphabet, and omkara, literally, beginning, female divine energy. Ujjitha, a word found in Sama Veda and Basya commentaries based on it, is also used as a name of the syllable. The word has three phonemes. A -U -M though it is often described as trisyllabic despite this being either archaic or the result of translation. The syllable Om is first mentioned in the Upanishads, the mystical texts associated with the Vedanta philosophy. It has variously been associated with concepts of «cosmic sound» or «mystical syllable» or «affirmation to something divine» or as symbolism for abstract spiritual concepts in the Upanishads. In the Aranyaka and the Brahmana layers of Vedic texts, the syllable is so widespread and linked to knowledge, that it stands for the whole of Veda. The etymological foundations of Om are repeatedly discussed in the oldest layers of the Vedantic texts the early Upanishads. The Aitareya Brahmana of Rig Veda, in section 5.32, for example suggests that the three phonetic components of Om pronounced a -U -M correspond to the three stages of cosmic creation, and when it is read or said, it celebrates the creative powers of the universe. The Brahmana layer of Vedic texts equate Om with Bhur Bhuva Svah, the latter symbolizing the whole Veda. They offer various shades of meaning to Om, such as it being the universe beyond the sun or that which is «mysterious and inexhaustible», or «the infinite language, the infinite knowledge», or «essence of breath, life, everything that exists», or that «with which one is liberated». The Sama Veda, the poetical Veda, orthographically maps Om to the audible, the musical truths in its numerous variations Oum, Aum, Ova 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 Um, etc. and then attempts to extract musical meters from it. The syllable Om evolves to mean many abstract ideas in the earliest Upanishads. Max Muller and other scholars state that these philosophical texts recommend Om as a tool for meditation, explain various meanings that the syllable may be in the mind of one meditating, ranging from artificial and senseless", to "...highest concepts such as the cause of the universe, essence of life, Brahman, Atman, and self-knowledge". <laughs> <laughs> Written representation Phonologically, the syllable Om represents, Aum, which is regularly monophthongized to o -tilde in Sanskrit phonology. When occurring within spoken Sanskrit, the syllable is subject to the normal rules of Sandhi in Sanskrit grammar, however with the additional peculiarity that after preceding a or a, the o of aum does not form v ridi o but guna o per panini 6.1.95 i.e. om. It is sometimes also written om m o tilde m, notably by Arya Samaj, where, i.e., the digit 3 is pluta, three times as long indicating a length of three more a that is, the time it takes to say three syllables—an overlong nasalized close mid-back rounded vowel. The om symbol is a ligature in Devanagari, combining o and Chandrabindu, mm. 
In Unicode, the symbol is encoded at U plus 0950 ohm Devanagari ohm and at U plus 1 F549 ohm ohm symbol. Generic symbol independent of Devanagari font. The Om or AUM symbol is found on ancient coins, in regional scripts. In Sri Lanka, Anuradhapura era coins dated from the 1st to 4th centuries are embossed with AUM along with other symbols. Nagari or Devanagari representations are found epigraphically on medieval sculpture, such as the dancing Shiva, ca. 10th to 12th century. Joseph Campbell, 1949, even argued that the dance posture itself can be taken to represent AUM as a symbol of the entirety of consciousness, universe, and the message that God is within a person and without. The Om symbol, with epigraphical variations, is also found in many Southeast Asian countries. For example, it is called Unalom or Aum in Thailand and has been a part of various flags and official emblems such as in the Thong Cham Klao of King Rama IV The Cambodian official seal has similarly incorporated the Aum symbol. In traditional Chinese characters, it is written as an pinyin an, and as wang, pinyin, wang in simplified Chinese characters. There have been proposals that the Om syllable may already have had written representations in Brahmi script, dating to before the Common Era. A proposal by Deb 1848 held that the swastika is a monogrammatic representation of the syllable Om, wherein two Brahmi O characters U Brahmi letter O were superposed crosswise and the M was represented by dot. A commentary in Nature considers this theory questionable and unproven. Roy 2011 proposed that Om was represented using the Brahmi symbols for A, U, and M, and that this may have influenced the unusual epigraphical features of the symbol Om for Om. Topic: <laughs> Hinduism. Om came to be used as a standard utterance at the beginning of mantras, chants or citations taken from the Vedas. For example, the Gayatri mantra, which consists of a verse from the Rigveda Samhita RV is prefixed not just by Om but by Om followed by the formula Bhur Bhuva Sva. Such recitations continue to be in use in Hinduism, with many major incantations and ceremonial functions beginning and ending with Om. Maheshwarananda 2002 suggests that the Om reflects the cosmological beliefs in Hinduism, as the primordial sound associated with the creation of universe from nothing. <laughs> Upanishads The syllable Om is described with various meanings in the Upanishads. Descriptions include the sacred sound, the yes, the Vedas, the Ujjatha, song of the universe, the infinite, the all-encompassing, the whole world, the truth, the ultimate reality, the finest essence, the cause of the universe, the essence of life, the Brahman, the Atman, the vehicle of deepest knowledge and self-knowledge. Topic: <laughs> Chandogya Upanishad. The Chandogya Upanishad is one of the oldest Upanishads of Hinduism. It opens with the recommendation that, "...let a man meditate on Om." It calls the syllable Om as Ujjatha, Ujjatha song, chant, and asserts that the significance of the syllable is thus, the essence of all beings is earth, the essence of earth is water, the essence of water are the plants, the essence of plants is man, the essence of man is speech, the essence of speech is the Rig Veda, the essence of the Rig Veda is the Sama Veda, and the essence of Sama Veda is the Ujjatha song, Om, Rik, Ark Ark is speech, states the text, and Saman, Saman is breath, they are pairs, and because they have love for each other, speech and breath find themselves themselves together and mate to produce a song. The highest song is Om, asserts section 1.1 of Chandogya Upanishad. It is the symbol of awe, of reverence, of threefold knowledge because Advaryu invokes it, the Hotr recites it, and Udgadar sings it. The second volume of the first chapter continues its discussion of syllable Om, explaining its use as a struggle between Devas gods and Asuras demons. Max Muller states that this struggle between gods and demons is considered allegorical by ancient Indian scholars, as good and evil inclinations within man, respectively. The legend in section 1.2 of Chandogya Upanishad states that gods took the Ujjatha song of Om unto themselves, thinking, "...with this song we shall overcome the demons." 
The syllable Om is thus implied as that which inspires the good inclinations within each person. Chandogya Upanishad's exposition of syllable Om in its opening chapter combines etymological speculations, symbolism, metric structure, and philosophical themes. In the second chapter of the Chandogya Upanishad, the meaning and significance of Om evolves into a philosophical discourse, such as in section 2. 10 where Om is linked to the highest self, and section 2.23 where the text asserts Om is the essence of three forms of knowledge, Om is Brahman and Om is all this observed world. Katho <laughs> Upanishad The Katha Upanishad is the legendary story of a little boy, Nashikita, the son of sage Vajrasravasa, who meets Yama, the Indian deity of death. Their conversation evolves to a discussion of the nature of man, knowledge, Atman soul, self, and moksha liberation. In section 1.2, Katha Upanishad characterizes knowledge, wisdom as the pursuit of good, and ignorance, delusion as the pursuit of pleasant, that the essence of Veda is to make man liberated and free, look past what has happened and what has not happened, free from the past and the future, beyond good and evil, and one word for this essence is the word Om. <laughs> Maitri Upanishad The Maitrayaniya Upanishad in 6th Prapathakas lesson discusses the meaning and significance of Om. The text asserts that Om represents Brahman Atman. The three roots of the syllable, states the Maitri Upanishad, are A plus U plus M. The sound is the body of soul, and it repeatedly manifests in three, as gender-endowed body, feminine, masculine, neuter, as light-endowed body, Agni, Vayu and Aditya, as deity-endowed body, Brahma, Rudra and Vishnu, as mouth-endowed body, Garhapatya, Dakshinagni and Ahavaniya, as knowledge-endowed body, Rig, Saman and Yahur, as world-endowed body, Bhur, Bhuva and Sva, as time-endowed body, past, present and future, as he endowed body, breath, fire and sun, as growth endowed body, food, water and moon, as thought endowed body, intellect, mind and psyche. Brahman exists in two forms, the material form, and the immaterial formless. The material form is changing, unreal. The immaterial formless isn't changing, real. The immortal formless is truth, the truth is the Brahman, the Brahman is the light, the light is the sun which is the syllable Om is the self, the world is Om, its light is sun, and the sun is also the light of the syllable Om, asserts the Upanishad. Meditating on Om, is acknowledging and meditating on the Brahman Atman soul, self. <laughs> Mandaka Upanishad The Mandaka Upanishad in the second Mundakam part, suggests the means to knowing the self and the Brahman to be meditation, self-reflection and introspection, that can be aided by the symbol Om. Adi Shankara, in his review of the Mandaka Upanishad, states Om as a symbolism for Atman soul, self. <laughs> Mandukya Upanishad The Mandukya Upanishad opens by declaring Om, this syllable is this whole world. Thereafter, it presents various explanations and theories on what it means and signifies. This discussion is built on a structure of four fourths or fourfold, derived from a plus u plus m plus silence or without an element. Aum is all states of time. In verse 1, the Upanishad states that time is threefold: the past, the present, and the future. That these three are. Aum. The four fourth of time is that which transcends time, that too is Aum expressed. Aum is all states of Atman. In verse 2, states the Upanishad, everything is Brahman, but Brahman is Atman, the soul, self, and that the Atman is fourfold. Johnston summarizes these four states of self, respectively, as seeking the physical, seeking inner thought, seeking the causes and spiritual consciousness, and the fourth state is realizing oneness with the self, the eternal. Aum is all states of consciousness In verses 3–6, the Mandukya Upanishad enumerates four states of consciousness, wakeful, dream, deep sleep and the state of akatma being one with self, the oneness of self. These four are A plus U plus M plus without an element", respectively. Aum is all of knowledge In verses 9–12, the Mandukya Upanishad enumerates fourfold etymological roots of the syllable Aum". It states that the first element of Aum is A, which is from apti or from atamatva being first. 
The second element is U, which is from Utkarsa exaltation or from Ubayatva intermediateness. The third element is M, from Miti erecting, constructing or from Mi Manati, or Apiti annihilation. The fourth is without an element, without development, beyond the expanse of universe. In this way, states the Upanishad, the syllable Om is indeed the Atman the self. Shvetashvatara Upanishad The Shvetashvatara Upanishad, in verses 1.14 to 1.16, suggests meditating with the help of syllable Om, where one's perishable body is like one fuel stick and the syllable Om is the second fuel stick, which with discipline and diligent rubbing of the sticks unleashes the concealed fire of thought and awareness within. Such knowledge, asserts the Upanishad, is the goal of Upanishads. The text asserts that Om is a tool of meditation empowering one to know the God within oneself, to realize one's Atman soul, self. Aitareya Aranyaka Aitareya Aranyaka in verse 23.6, explains Om as, "...an acknowledgement, melodic confirmation, something that gives momentum and energy to a hymn." Om Om is the pratigara agreement with a hymn. Likewise is Tatha so be it with a song. But Om is something divine, and Tatha is something human. Topic: <laughs> Bhagavad Gita. The Bhagavad Gita, in the epic Mahabharata, mentions the meaning and significance of Om in several verses. For example, Fowler notes that verse 9.17 of the Bhagavad Gita synthesizes the competing dualistic and monist streams of thought in Hinduism, by using Om, which is the symbol for the indescribable, impersonal Brahman. I am the father of this world, mother, ordainer, grandfather, the thing to be known, the purifier, the syllable Om, Rik, Saman, and also Yajis. The significance of the sacred syllable in the Hindu traditions, is similarly highlighted in various of its verses, such as verse 17.24 where the importance of Om during prayers, charity and meditative practices is explained as follows Therefore, uttering Om, the acts of yagna fire ritual, dana charity, and tapas austerity, as enjoined in the scriptures, are always begun by those who study the Brahman. Yoga Sutra The aphoristic verse 1.27 of Pantanali's Yoga Sutra links Om to yoga practice, as follows: Tesa Vikeka Pranava, his word is Om. Johnston states this verse highlights the importance of Om in the meditative practice of yoga, where it symbolizes three worlds in the soul: the three times, past, present, and future eternity, the three divine powers, creation, preservation, and transformation in one being, and three essences in one spirit, immortality, omniscience, and joy. It is, asserts Johnston, a symbol for the perfected spiritual man his emphasis. Puranas The medieval-era texts of Hinduism, such as the Puranas adopt and expand the concept of Om in their own ways, and to their own theistic sects. According to the Vayu Purana, Om is the representation of the Hindu Trimurti, and represents the union of the three gods, viz. A for Brahma, U for Vishnu and M for Shiva. The three sounds also symbolize the three Vedas, namely Rigveda, Samaveda, Yajurveda. The Shiva Purana highlights the relation between deity Shiva and the Pranava or Om. Shiva is declared to be Om, and that Om is Shiva. <laughs> Jainism In Jainism, Om is considered a condensed form of reference to the Pansa Paramesthi, by their initials A plus A plus A plus U plus M o three meters. The Dravyasamgraha quotes a Prakrit line Oma ekaksara Pankaparamesthi namedipam tatkathamiti Arahanta asarira iariya taha uvajaya munium Translation, veneration to the Arhats, veneration to the perfect ones, veneration to the masters, veneration to the teachers, veneration to all the monks in the world. Aaum or just Om is one syllable short form of the initials of the five Parameshthas Arahant, Ashiri, Acharya, Upajaya, Muni. Om Nama Om Nama Sidanam six syllables, Om Nhi two syllables, and just Om one syllable are the short forms of the Parameshthi mantra, also called Namokar mantra or Napkar mantra in Jainism. 
Topic: <inaudible> Buddhism. Om is often used in some later schools of Buddhism, for example Tibetan Buddhism, which was influenced by Indian Hinduism and Tantra. In Chinese Buddhism, Om is often transliterated as the Chinese character An (Pinyin An) or Wang (Pinyin Wang). Topic. Tibetan Buddhism Vajrayana. In Tibetan Buddhism, Om is often placed at the beginning of mantras and dharanis. Probably the most well-known mantra is, Om Mani Padmi Hum, the six-syllable mantra of the Bodhisattva of Compassion, Avalokiteshvara. This mantra is particularly associated with the four-armed Shadakshari form of Avalokiteshvara. Moreover, as a seed syllable bija mantra, AUM is considered sacred and holy in esoteric Buddhism. Some scholars interpret the first word of the mantra Om Manipadmi Hum to be Om, with a meaning similar to Hinduism, the totality of sound, existence, and consciousness. Om has been described by the 14th Dalai Lama as composed of three pure letters, A, U, and M. These symbolize the impure body, speech, and mind of everyday unenlightened life of a practitioner, they also symbolize the pure exalted body, speech and mind of an enlightened Buddha." According to Simpkins, Om is a part of many mantras in Tibetan Buddhism and is a symbolism for "...wholeness, perfection and the infinite". Neo Guardian Kings and Komenu Lion Dogs AUM is symbolically represented by Neo Ren Wang statues in Japan, and their equivalent in East Asia. Neo appear in pairs in front of Buddhist temple gates and stupas, in the form of two fierce looking guardian kings. Vajra. One has an open mouth, regarded by Buddhists as symbolically speaking the A syllable, the other has a closed mouth, symbolically speaking the um. Syllable. The two together are regarded as saying, AUM, the Vajra breath, or the absolute in Sanskrit. Komenu, Bo Kwan, also called lion dogs, found in Japan, Korea, and China, also occur in pairs before Buddhist temples and public spaces, and again, one has an open mouth, agyo, the other closed. Ungyo. Like Neo statues, they are traditionally interpreted to be saying the start and end of on. A transliteration of the Sanskrit sacred syllable AUM or OM, signifying the start and end of everything. Topic: <inaudible> Sikhism. Ik Oankar, iconically represented as in Sikhism, are the opening words of the Guru Granth Sahib, the Sikh scripture. It is the statement that there is one God and that there is singularity despite seeming plurality. The Oankar of Sikhism is related to Om in Hinduism, states the Indologist Wendy Doniger. Some Sikhs disagree that Ik Oankar is same as Om. The phrase is a compound of the numeral one ik and Ankar, states Doniger, canonically understood in Sikhism to refer to absolute monotheistic unity of God. Ankar is, states Wazir Singh, a variation of Om AUM of the ancient Indian scriptures with a slight change in its orthography, implying the seed force that evolves as the universe." Ik Ankar is part of the Mul Mantra in Sikh teachings and represents one God, explains Gulati, where Ik means one, and Ankar is equivalent of the Hindu Om AUM. Guru Nanak wrote a poem entitled Oankar in which, states Doniger, he attributed the origin and sense of speech to the divinity, who is thus the Om Maker." Ik Amkara appears at the start of Mul Mantra, states Kohli, and it occurs as AUM in the Upanishads and in Gurbani. However, the meaning of Oankar in the Sikh tradition, states Pashura Singh, is quite different in certain respects than those in other Indian philosophical traditions. <laughs> Modern reception. The Brahmic script Om ligature has become widely recognized in Western counterculture since the 1960s, mostly in its standard Devanagari form, Om, but the Tibetan alphabet Om has also gained limited currency in popular culture. Notes References Sources
Von Gley Snap, Helmuth 1999, Jainism, An Indian Religion of Salvation Der Jainismus, Eine Indischer Lassingsreligion, Sridhar B. Shratri, Trans, Delhi, Mutilal Banarsidass, ISBN 81-208-1376-6 External links and further reading Wiktionary entry Ohm". Just say Om Joel Stein, Time Magazine Archives Kumar, S., Majendra, H., Manjanath, N., Naveen, K., Tells, S. 2010. Meditation on Om, Relevance from Ancient Texts and Contemporary Science. International Journal of Yoga, 3 2-5. doi, 10.4103, 0973-6131.6 PMC 2952121. PMID 20948894. Autonomic changes during OM meditation tells et al. 1995. Frank, A. H. 1915. The meaning of the OM Mani Padmi Hum formula. The Journal of the Royal Asiatic Society of Great Britain and Ireland, 397–404. JSTOR 25189337. Analysis of Acoustic of Ohm. Chant to study its effect on nervous system. Sightseer 10.1.1.186.8652. Kumar, Uttam, Galeria, Anupam, Ketrapal, Chunni Lal. 2015. Neuro cognitive aspects of Om. Sound, syllable perception, a functional neuroimaging study. Cognition and Emotion, 29, 432-441. doi, 10.1080, 1009 PMID 24845107